Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to be doing the Threadology Block 5 called Royal Star Block. And if you are following along, this is made up of all triangles. I've never made this before, but it really looks like it might be fun. So let's get started and I'll show you my fabrics. Now, as everybody knows that does triangles, you start out with a square first. So here's all my squares. Got them all marked. So we're going to do the big block. Alrighty, so the very first thing that it says to do is we're going to take our block A and we're going to cut them because we want to make four out of each of these. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, this is similar to marking. Let me see if I can get this a little bit closer for now, you. Now, if you feel more comfortable, by all means, go ahead and mark your fabric from this corner to this corner and that corner to that corner before you cut it. Otherwise, take your ruler, make sure it's oversized compared to your square, and then don't come on the corner with your ruler. You want to come just a little bit to the left as if you were going to use a pencil and mark it. Go like this. And in my case, that's where my blade is going to hit. Okay? Go all the way down here. And that's where my blade is going to hit. So I know that my blade is going to hit right on the ends. Each end. So we're going to do that first. And it did exactly that. Now you don't want to separate them yet and then you're going to want to put it over here on the other side and do the same thing. Come off that edge so that when you cut it, it cuts it right down that section. Let's see if I can do this. I might be able to do it this way. Nope, that's not going to work. I have got to put it on the other side. Okay, let's just reposition it. And I'm right off that edge. I'm going to double check it with my pencil. I'm sorry, the camera was not recording me cutting that fabric the way I wanted you to see it. So let's just go ahead and moving on. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our letter B, which are these squares right here, and we're going to make eight of them. We're going to cut them one time right down the middle. And you should have four of them. And I always do one at a time. I never do more than one at a time. That's just my preference. Now the directions say that we're going to take D and we're going to cut it along the diagonal just like we did. So you have two, you're going to end up with eight of them. I just thought of something here. I'm going to use this like a rotating mat. That'll work. Okay. Let's see what my other color is. Let's go with this so it's not blending in some. And take your time. Put pressure on your ruler that you're holding down in place. It'll hold your fabric and everything. And now they're saying to take an A and a D and attaching it to a B. So I'm going to take my B's. I'm moving them over here because I'm going to show you here on my, my board. Move this. Here's A and B and D. 
I mean B, I'm sorry. A, D, B. All right. B is bigger than A and D. A and D, we're going to sew together. And this is where that, I want to call it that different kind of block pops up. And I'm going to show you what I did. Now, we're taking a white one and a colored one. We're going to put them together. And this is where you determine what goes where. Now, if you, this is, you're going to pay attention to your stitching. And the reason I know this is I've already done all the little squares, which I will show you when I'm finished. Have the colored fabric on the top and always have it on the top when you sew it. If you need a pin, put a pin in. We're going to sew it from the top to the bottom down here. And we're going to do every one of these. So I'm going to line them up on the sewing machine. This is how I have them all lined up, ready to go, because I'm going to go ahead and chain stitch one right after the other. And I have a, whoops, I have a twisted thread is what I have. Let me fix that real quick. So I'm using a size 12 needle, universal, white thread, my regular foot, and I'm using the full quarter inch. I am not using a scant quarter inch. She always has everything oversized so that we will actually have to square it up. The um, When we get done making this block, which contains three triangles, we will square that up and I will show you how I square it up. My ruler. I think I don't need a pen in any of mine. Let's see here. Now cut them all apart and iron them open. Now I've ironed all these open and I split them instead of putting them to the right or the left. And then they're gonna have a little tail on them like a kite, don't worry about that. We're gonna take it and we're going to attach it to the half square triangles that we cut. Now remember, you take your right sides, they go together but before you do that, take your right side, you're going to fold it in half. And like I mentioned earlier, Kimberly gives us extra fabric. So don't worry that this is going to be off in the size. And I'll show you here. You're going to match up the very center. Just put a pin in the middle of that seam. And then right there is my center. Match it up, put your pin in it, just like that, and then I go over here to the right side, make sure I'm in the camera, take this right here, and I'm marking it on each end because I am not sewing it from the end. This is one of those times that I don't sew because I do not come from this, this uh, little bitty corner right here because that buries in your sewing machine. So I'm going to show you what I do, but go ahead and pin all these up and then we'll start sewing them. Show it to you again at a different angle. This is the good side, so they're going to be together like that. So you want to take this one, you want to fold it because you're trying to find the middle. Press it, get a little bit of a crease right there, which now you can see. Take this here, you're going to take your pin and you're going to put it in that seam right there and that's about a quarter inch if you don't know where your quarter inch is on these because we're going to be stitching on this side and the other side this would be the time you want to mark them if that's how you do it and then you're putting it right there you're sticking it right into that see this 
this is where the little pinched area is. You're putting it in there. Match it up. Up at the top. And then just go like this and pin it. Go to the end. Match them up. Put a pin in them. Go to the other end. Match it up. It's okay that it doesn't fit. Don't be stretching or anything. Don't worry about it. Remember now, this is on the bias, so you got to be really careful. You don't want all this distorted because you'll see it in your block. And that's it. Okay? So do every one of them like that. All right. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go midway between the first pin and the pin in the middle. And I'm going to put my foot down. And we sew these at a quarter inch, not a scant. And I'm going to start sewing. Take it off. I'm going to take this pin and I'm going to pin it on the back side. I'm flipping it over and now I'm going to go on the ab above the part that in other words my stitch stopped right here I'm gonna go up a little bit so I'm above my stitch and I'm gonna go over my stitch and I'm gonna come on through the bottom down here and then I have not started on either one of my tips and so I don't have to worry about that going into my sewing machine and then there you have it even though it's stitched as you can see I started I'm like the top stitch is the second stitch I did and I just came right over and then just kept on going this way it doesn't come apart right there now this block is going to be decreased in size. Okay, so we're gonna do them all like that. So go ahead, I'll show you another one. You're gonna start between the first pin. Well, if you didn't put a pin, you're just starting in the middle of that before your center. Don't need to lock it into place. No need to since you're gonna go over it anyway when you flip it. Here's what my next one looks like. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go, like that. See? And that's what you do. Let's open it up, we'll take a look at it. It looks just fine. And it's right in the middle of that. That's what you want. You want this in the middle. You've attached these two to that. All right, just continue, and when we're all done with that, I'll show you what we do next. All right, here's what they look like when they're all done, and I opened that seam up also, so that's what it looks like. All right, so the next part, they want you to make half square triangles. They want you to take C and E, and they want you to make four of them. So what you're going to have to do is mark, I'm going to mark on the right here mark on the wrong side of the fabric I'm going to actually use a pencil I'm not using a friction pen and in one of my previous videos I purchased the lock block and these little omni grid rulers remember I got this on Fort Worth Fabric Studios website and this is what I'm going to use to mark
it has a line down the middle on this ruler and each side from the line so to the right is a quarter of an inch to the left is a quarter inch I'm gonna put this line right down the middle of my square I'm gonna take my pencil because this is one of those little lead pencils you're not gonna see this once you sew this I'll show it to you here in a second all right that's what it looks like and when I sew this I'm not gonna sew on the line I'm gonna sew to the left of the line I'm gonna show you on my sewing machine how I see it to sew it in order to get this block to come out correctly otherwise if I sew it right on the line it's gonna be a little bit too small let me go ahead and finish marking this other one and then I'm gonna set up my camera a little bit different so that you can see over my shoulder onto it I set it from a side view And I did this on all the little small ones that I did already. So I know this works. Alrighty. And then take <clears throat> your right sides together. And I'm just going to put a pin in one side. Just like this. And then I'll sew it. And we're sewing on the lines. All right, let me get my camera set up. Now, I do not know if you can see on my foot, there's a little spot right here in the middle where the needle's at. I'm keeping that little opening, or that, that little, it is actually an opening with my, I can feel it, that it's open with my um, pointer here. But I'm going to go along this side of the line as I sew. And you just go real nice and easy. You can pin your fabric more than the one time that I did if you'd like. And I'm just keeping that little thing that's on my foot to the left of the line. see how I went all on the left of that line and I'm going to do it again and this way I'll know that when I open that up after I've cut it that it's going to be the correct size Now when I cut them apart, all I do is I take my quarter inch line and I put it on the pencil mark and go straight down there and open it. Then I'll go ahead and I'll iron it open. Just like that, you'll have four of those.
we're going to take off these little rabbit ears. That's what I call them. And this block is the correct size, by the way. And I'm going to show you the way to find out after you've sewn it if it's correct or not. Okay, so the four that we only cut, and that was it, you should be able to put that on top, and that should match like that because that is the size, okay? That's the same size as these four little blocks that we cut and didn't do anything to because those are our corner units. So all I'm gonna do is take the little wings off on all of these, which you guys can do on yours. And then we're going to cut that other block down that we did at the very beginning that we created, we're gonna cut that one down, we're gonna square it up. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. You get you one of your favorite rulers to do it with. Alrighty, so the square that we're gonna, the block that we're gonna square up needs to be three and a half inches. And this is how I do it. So since I'm going to start doing it with the colored fabric, because I have, the, or you can call it the medium fabric or the light fabric or whatever, because my mine's colored, I have white and then I have colored. Since I'm starting with it on the right, it always needs to be on the right in order for you to keep it straight in your mind and on your tabletop. I'm using this ruler here, and I have two choices, but if you, for this ruler to use it. So what you want to do is, it doesn't make any difference which ruler you get, but you want this angle right here follow my finger you want that down your ruler that's what you're going to be going by and looking at so what i'm looking at is starting from here i've got to go three and a half so your ruler has to be at least three and a half now some people trim it two times right left that's it they're done that's not the way i want to do it this is my three and a half and I want to make it so that I've got to trim all four sides. The first thing I have to do is take my line and I must put it down this seam right here. That is how you're going to square it up. So the first thing that I do is I put it down my seam and I come up as close to the right and the left or the right, the right hand side and the top of my fabric. Okay. Then I trim this right hand side. And then I trim this side. That's going to be out of your view, so hold on one now second. Now you're looking down on top of it so that my hand is not in the way. And I go across it like that. Okay? Now I take it and I turn it. So I've taken my color and now it's on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. Now I will take and what I'm doing is I'm going to line up on this side and the bottom across the bottom there my three and a half on my ruler. Only if it gets on this line. So I have to go back to the line and I'm slowly pulling it down on this line so I can get it as close to three and a half as I can, which is right there. This is my three and a half line. And I've still got the line going straight through it. So now I'm going to cut it again because, well, let me go down here a little bit. That's three and a quarter. Now, oh, wait a minute. There's my three and a half. Okay, and I've got a little bitty angle down here and I don't know if y'all can even see that. But it has to be taken off just a little bit on this side and this side after I get it squared on this side. Let me back you up a little bit here. There we go. Put pressure on this so that it does not move. We're 
going to turn it this way and I'm going to look at it. Because as long as I got this seam, I'm good. And actually, I can come down on the three and a half there and the three and a half there. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that the fabric is actually on top of that orange line. So I have three and a half, because that's what this is right here. And this is three and a half right here. And then I've just got a little bit to take off. And I mean a, a small amount. You can see that little bit sticking out there. And same with the top. You can hear it. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. And off the edge. Now that is squaring up that block. And now I have to square up every single block. Okay? That's how I do it. I'm going to square all these up and then I'll be back and I'll show you the design. Let's see if I can do it one more time for you. So I have my 45 degree angle up that seam. And I'm taking off the right hand side. I'm taking off the left hand side. Can't seem to get enough pressure on that thing. There we go. Then I turn it this way. Let me make sure you're still in the camera here. And I put it down my seam at the three and a half. I'm coming down to three and a half. I have three and a half on this side, three and a half on that side, and it's right down that seam. And then put pressure. And there you go. Done. When you lay it out, it's going to look like this. You put a square on every corner. You make sure that these things are pointing out. Those two are pointing to the left. These two are pointing down. Those two are up. And these two are to the, I mean, those are to the right. Excuse me. I don't know, my left and my right. And those two are from the left. And then the four in the middle, they make a square, which almost looks like a square and a square. All right. And then you're going to sew the top row, the next row, the next row. And, but what I actually do is... I sew these two middle ones, these two middle ones, those two, and those two. Then when I have all of those sewn together, I just sew the left onto that, the left onto that, the left on like that. So you do it any order you want, okay? And then when you're done, we sew all the rows together. So when I get each row, then I will show you. I'll come back and show you the four rows laid out. Now see, this is how I have them sewn. I have these two sewn together these sewn together so I could take a look at them to make sure they all looked good. Now I'm going to sew this one to this and it's just your plain straight seam so you guys know how to do all this. And that's all I'm doing is just going to sew all these and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I pin each row. Okay so there it is laid out before it actually gets the rows attached. Now I'm going to show you how to pin the rows because we're, this is very important that you get all these intersections correct. Okay, so the very first thing you want to do is you want to go to the middle here. And you're trying to make sure that when you sew, it goes across this here and not down in here. So I usually put a pin in this one and a pin right in the tip of that one. And now that they're held together with a pin, get another pin and stick it in there to hold it in place. And then you can take this pin out. I'm going to pin it on both sides 
just to hold it. Take that one out there. She's telling me that the telephone made a noise. I know. Thank you for telling me. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's a good girl. And then we're going to go down to this end here. And right here, where you see this, that's what you're looking at when you're sewing. And then down here at the end, make sure your seam stays open. And what you're pinning is this piece right here so that it doesn't fold over on you when you're sewing. And that's it for that. And then this is one row and I go ahead and I pin both rows. Do it the same way. Go in the middle. And this time, the part you're looking at is right here. This is what you're looking at to sew. Feels like it. There we go. It folded over is what happened. And then just go ahead, go along here, make sure all your seams stay open now. Match them up and pin them all. And then you're going to take your time when you sew this. And if you're one of those people that, you know, you're worried about that first time sewing, you're going to have to pick it all out, you know, you could base stitch this if you wanted to. Nothing says you can't do that. And just basting it, you're just using a larger stitch. So this way, if you have to take it out, then by all means, it's going to be a lot easier. And then if you did it right the first time around when you based it, go back over with a 2.5 inch stitch. I mean, it'll already have been stitched down. It's not like you're going to make a mistake. All right, so let me get these two sewn. This one turned out really, really good. Now I'm going to do the other one. And if you have to help pull it through like I was doing when you get to a large, bulky spot, then by all means, go ahead and pull, help it by pulling it through. Just don't put a lot of pressure on it. You don't want your needle to break. Here's where that bulky intersection comes in, where all these pieces are laid down and sewn on top of each other. And you should have it double pinned to help hold it down. I'm almost out of bobbin thread. I wonder if I can make it. 
Mm, oh, I'm going to chance it. Let's see how many times it's going to tell me that. Okay. All right, dog falling up the stairs. Take a look at that intersection there. Yep, looks good. Didn't take any of my points off. I think I can live with it. Okay, there they are, all completed and done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. I hope you learned something, but I hope everybody had a good time and had fun making it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.